I made my teacher cry. <laughs> Story time. When I was in second grade, I had this teacher and she was the devil and we're gonna name her Miss Jackson. And the reason I call her a devil is because she would say really mean things to me to my face. She would be like, Ty, stop talking like that. You sound like a little girl. Or your favorite color can't be pink. You have to choose one of the boy colors. And since I was so young, I didn't understand how serious these things were and I didn't know I can get her in trouble. And I would go home sad like every single day. Eventually my mom noticed and she asked me what was wrong. So I told her some of the things that Miss Jackson would say to me and my mom was mad. And my mom was like, the next time she says something to you, say something rude back. And if you get in trouble, I'll handle her from there. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. Now, Miss Jackson was a heavy lady. So I knew if I said something rude to her, it would be about her weight. Though we don't body shame around here. We don't do that, okay? So I'm in school eating lunch with my friends who happen to be girls. And Miss Jackson comes up to me and she's like, shouldn't you be eating with the boys? So I looked at her and I was like, shouldn't you be eating a salad? And the lunchroom start laughing and then she started crying. <laughs> Story time at the time a nail salon took advantage of my blindness. My sister and I got our nails done. We used to go all the time. And while the lady was doing my nails, she asked me how I knew how much money I had. At the time, I used cash. Never again after this. But I told her that I folded my bills a certain way. I told her that I folded my 20s, different than my 10s, different than my 5s, different than my 1s. Anything of her asking that question, I think it's a good question. And I just thought she was curious. I got done with my nails. She walked me towards the front. And my sister was actually just finishing up with hers. So it was perfect. There was another man at the front. And he asked me how I knew how much money I had. Well, in the same thing, before I left to go to the nail salon, I made sure exactly how much money I had. My sister helped me count it, helped me make sure that I folded the right bills just so I knew how much I had, how much I would spend. I gave her the money. Positive that I gave her the right amount because it was just folded. It was folded perfectly and I counted it out. She takes it, starts talking in a different language, and then tells me that I owe her 20 more dollars. Part two of the time a nail salon took advantage of my blindness. But we go back and forth a few times. I'm positive that I gave her the right amount. Really counting it back to her. And she's like, no, 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 you're wrong. And at this point, more people are walking into the salon. So I'm getting really uncomfortable. Back at it, I should have pulled out my phone that has a money reader on it and read her the money using my screen reader. But I was super uncomfortable and more people were walking in and I just wanted to leave it at that. My sister was paying somewhere else. I had no idea where she was and I didn't want to call out to her or anything. So when we got home, I wanted to double check that these people were actually scamming me. My sister helped me look at the money and aside from the amount I paid for my nails, obviously in the tip, I was missing $20. We can learn something from most situations and this situation- Here's a story time of how me and my sisters almost got kidnapped. So my mom and her boyfriend were just gonna go out and have a night to themselves and I was home watching my two little sisters. At the time I was 13, my two little sisters were nine and six. So around 6 p.m., my mom and her boyfriend leave. Me and my sisters just sit down and watch a movie, and then I get up to make them dinner. I get paranoid really easily, and while I was making them dinner, I look out the kitchen window, and I thought I seen somebody in the backyard. I text my mom, and she gets on the cameras that are outside, and she said nobody was out there. I continue making them dinner. We sit down and eat, and then we start watching another movie. Then we start hearing knocking. It wasn't coming from any of the doors. It was coming from the side of the house. I didn't want to bother my mom on her one night out, so I just took the kids, and we went upstairs and watched a movie in my room. My six-year-old sister at the time went to the bathroom and she came back in literal tears. She was literally crying so hard until I finally got her to stop and tell me what was wrong. She said as she was walking back from the bathroom, she seen somebody downstairs. I quietly locked my door and I put my sisters in the closet and I call my mom right away. I'm running out of time like for part two. Part two of how me and my sisters almost got kidnapped. I called my mom and then she looked on the cameras downstairs and somebody was in the house. She never told me what the person was doing. I guess she just didn't want me worrying, but she called 911 right away. While my two little sisters were in the closet, my six-year-old sister would not stop crying and I'm pretty sure the person downstairs heard her. At this time, my mom and her boyfriend were already on the way and so were the police. I heard him coming up the steps, so I quietly opened the closet door and promised my sisters that they would stay quiet and be calm no matter what. I didn't know what he was here for, so I hid in the side of the bed in front of the closet so that he would get to me before he got to the girls. I heard him just rummaging through stuff and stuff breaking. Then a couple minutes later, I hear the police sirens. Right as I hear the police sirens, I hear a bedroom window smash. While trying to stay as calm as I can, three policemen bust down the door. They grab me and my sisters and take us outside. About five minutes after they take us outside and put us in the back of their car, my mom and her boyfriend shows up. About 20 minutes later after he was caught, they did notify us that he was wanted for murder of two younger girls and one adult male. About $10,000 of our stuff was either missing or broke. Then about a month later when we were capable to, we did move. Nothing has happened since. I'm going to tell you guys about the time that my entire class teamed up to take my teacher down. And by down, I mean fired, which is terrible, but... And to be clear, I wasn't involved in the incident. I was just asked in to be a witness along with the rest of the class. If you're not interested at this point, like, I don't even know. So when I was in sixth grade, I had this teacher called Mr. W. We're going to call him Mr. W. He was our science teacher. And he was fine. 
He wasn't like amazing or bad. It was just okay. He did smell like really, really bad. But again, that didn't affect his teaching at all. One day, however, I don't even know how this happened. He asked us all to get started on our work. He was a little irritated that day. I don't even remember why. One of the girls in our class, her name was Summer. She didn't have her workbook. Mr. W asked her where her work was. I didn't bring it today. They started arguing. The rest of the class was kind of silent, just watching this. She's a nice girl. She wasn't attacking him or anything. He did, however, get very angry. So angry, in fact, that he grabbed his binder and threw it across the room over her head. It just barely skipped her head and slammed on the floor. This wasn't like an empty binder from the dollar store. It was a teacher binder full of work. We were all silent. Summer stopped talking. Look for part two. Okay, this is part two of my teacher almost getting fired. After that whole incident, my class was dead silent for the rest of the period. We then all went to lunch. None of us really talked about it, but then all of a sudden a woman came up to us. We were all kind of sitting around the same table. This woman, I guess she was administration. I have no idea who she was. I think what had happened was a bunch of students had reported him. She asked us all for Mr. W's class to follow her. I don't remember if this was the same day or the following day, but she asked us to follow her into an empty classroom. I think it was used for testing. She had us all sit around the table and recount the incident to the best of our ability. Summer was there. What she wanted to know was basically, did Mr. W throw that binder at Summer. And we all recounted it basically the same, but at the end of the day, we all said yes. But eventually they let us all go. The following day, Mr. W was really sad. Barely spoke to us, barely did anything. He was passing out some work. He looked at Summer and said, Summer, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw that binder at you. His voice sounded like he was about to break. But we did have him as our teacher for the rest of the year, so no, he wasn't actually fired. But I do think Summer was terrified to speak up for the rest of that year. And the rest of us kind of didn't want to be in that class anymore. Yeah. Story time. I babysat a lot of kids in my neighborhood and there was this one night that I was babysitting a two-year-old. It was around 10 o'clock at night so the kid was sleeping and I was just sitting in the living room. In the living room there was a big TV, a couch, and then behind me it was a wall with a giant window. So it was really late at night, I had nothing to do so I was snapchatting my friends. If you snapchat anybody I'm sure you know that sometimes you snapchat really fast. You don't even know or look at what you're sending. I was mass snapping all my friends and then one of them replied 10 minutes later and he said, who's that guy behind you? And I turn around and no one was there, so I'm like, he's playing a joke on me. But then I get another Snapchat from this friend I had, and she lives all the way across the country. They don't know each other. And she said, I think there's someone outside. So I was really freaked out because I was alone. There was a giant window behind me. Apparently there was someone outside. I wasn't going to call the child's parents because I didn't want to freak them out. But I was scared. So then I went around the house, locked all of the doors. Sorry, it's a really long story, like for part two. Ah, ha, 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 part two. Uh, so yeah, there was a guy outside the window. So yes, I did lock all the doors and everything. I made sure everything was secure. I closed the blinds. So for the rest of the night, nothing else really happened other than this really weird thump. It was like someone was knocking on a window. Allow me to demonstrate. I ignored it because I was in denial that this was happening. The rest of the night was normal. The parents came home. I drove really fast home. And then the next morning I wake up. And apparently, an old man with Alzheimer's had escaped from his little home. I did not know this because it was dark outside, and even if I did see him outside the window, I wouldn't have known this. But he was naked. Naked. So, it wasn't like a mass murderer outside the window, but it was a naked man with Alzheimer's looking at me through a window. It's not every teenage girl's dream, but it's really weird just knowing that a naked old man was staring at me through a window. I'm 16 years old, and last year when I was walking home from school, I saw two little kids that couldn't be older than nine were walking home a little bit in front of me. I assumed they were brother and sister. Anyway, me being so much bigger with longer legs, I eventually started to catch up to them, and right when I was about to turn off into my street, I noticed a car pulled up next to them and asked them to get in. My heart stopped when I heard the older one say but mister, we don't know you. After that I kept walking towards them and screamed out Lucy. Mark, because I didn't know their actual names, and they both looked at me. I ran up and said, guys don't run off on me like that. Stay close. I pretend. When I was 12 I met some girl on a game called Momio. We became IBFS and two weeks later she told me that she was going to the same school as me. I was so so happy that I was buying things and ordering things so I could give it to her. So school was about to start and I realized that I was going to be late. I asked my mom if she wanted to drive me and she said no so I just walked and got there late. Once I was at school I had to go to class immediately. She texted me that we could meet up during lunch. She wanted to meet me outside the school for some reason but I was so stupid that I didn't get suspicious or anything.
So I just walked outside after school and started looking for her because she texted me that she was there. When I saw someone I said, Hello are you here? When I saw someone I said, Hello are you here? Then a old man came out and grabbed my ankles. A teacher was walking by and saw me and the old guy and just started slapping the guy with her bag. The guy started screaming and ran away. And now I'm scared to talk to PPL online cool. This one time when I was little I thought I could talk to trees. Because I had no friends. And I used to sit by them and, and say things and one day I was talking to my tree friend called. Kevin and this girl went up to me and said are you talking to that tree? Freak. And I started crying and hugged onto the tree. And while she was laughing one of the branches fell on the girl's head. Thanks Kevin. I had a boyfriend back in junior year but I was close with his friends before I dated him. When we were dating I had his friend in one of my classes and he was so sweet and funny but never went further because he respected our relationship. Then my boyfriend and I broke up and I was so upset. I told him about it and he said he was here for me. Over the past few months, on the first day of 6th grade I had a crush and he liked me back. He's been my boyfriend for two months. We met up at the park and he decided to kiss me. I kissed him back the next day I asked my mom if my friend could come over that was actually my boyfriend she didn't know about him once he got to my house my mom said he was my cousin. I've been kissing my cousin.